Hey, Yellow Rules here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So in the last episode, Larry uh, jumped up to be a witness. Um, I don't know if he actually has something for us or was just trying to buy us more time. Um, but I guess that's what we're going to find out right now. Wow. Okay, the game was way too loud. <laughs> that was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. We're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? Did you say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's... it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. And if you hadn't touched it, you wouldn't be in this predicament right now. I see. Right? Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten-minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15. Everything depends on Larry now. Yep. So, let's see. Will this work in our favor, or um, will it be a bust? Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Alright, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. Uh, that night I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back and at the rental dock, shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked down over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Okay, interesting. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any matter, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Okay. Let's see. Uh, what I want to press was um, this statement. Where did the sound come from? Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. Looked out over the lake, but I didn't notice the boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? There should have been. Well, Mr. Butts? Oh, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hm. 
So after that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. Uh, that and her two sounds like gunshots just after midnight on 1225. I think I need to go back and press something from Larry towards the beginning of his uh, statement. Um, something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay, first of all, what time was it? Okay, this is what I needed. I know I need, um, Lot of Heart's testimony, but he needs to say what time he heard the shot. Oh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? Um, I was looking for something. Found it. So he said it was around... 11 when he heard the gunshot. Okay, that's significant. Um, present um, a lot of hearts. I think I need to present this to it. I really don't want to use any of my strikes. I know I get five of them in a case, but I just really don't want to screw it up and use any of them, really. Um, I'm gonna do it. Okay, that was correct. Good. Wait a second, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? Uh, that's what I said. But Miss Alanda Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night, but the pistol was fired three times, remember? That's what it says in the description for it. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? Yo, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? <laughs> That's not how this works. Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Um, well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Huh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, on my headphones. Oh, he had a Walkman or something with him? Oh. Order, order. Stop that booing. Mr. Butts, you were listening to our radio on earphones? Yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should you continue the testimony? No, continue. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. What Larry heard. Okay, let's see. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Uh, that's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud, like, but I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. Which was? Do you want to tell us that part? No? Okay. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? Yes, but... I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat from the radio. 
true enough, but it's difficult to believe this testimony. Objection! Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, D J Judge An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. Oh, good point. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor, but sometimes when they're talking, there's music playing in the background. Not, not usually, but sometimes, depending on the station you're listening to. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing the charade. Hopefully it'll pay off. Hmm, it's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. No, this is fine. Anchor shells and real boom love. Like, I'm sure I the gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. Press this. What did he say? Don Karma, Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask, hmm? Fine, very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Hmm. Hmm. It's almost Christmas? Do I present Lada's thing again? Because she said she heard the gunshots after midnight. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is correct. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? Ah, what's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. It is something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when you heard the gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That yeah, would seem to be the case, yes. Is it because you have so many, um, cases throughout the day that you don't remember the details of this one, or are you just lost, Judge? But that contradicts the two testimonies we have heard so far, Your Honor. Both Miss Hart and the old man said it was after midnight when they heard the shots. In other words, when they heard the gunshots, it was already Christmas. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. I can't tell if this is benefiting us or just digging our grave. Order, order. This is me. Two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? <laughs> hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. What do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's wrong. He's right. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. The fact that the pistol was fired three times. This is my evidence. The murder weapon? Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. Then, when then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. The third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. I guess that would make sense out of yesterday's testimonies. Bah, you waste our time again with your empty statements. Yes, the pistol was fired three times. 
But do you have any proof that it was fired before midnight? Do you have proof that the witness didn't just think he heard something? Indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, well, sir, there's no turning back now. Do you have evidence that proves there was a gunshot before midnight? Do you have evidence that proves Mr. Butts wasn't just hearing things? Yes, I do. Where is it? The second lake photo. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24, 10.50 p.m. Oh, well, yeah? Hmm? But there's nothing on the wick in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That's why this photograph was taken. In other words, there was a gunshot at that time, at the time that Larry claims. Wow, Larry's actually being helpful. Order, order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. Expecting an objection from, um, from Von Karma any second now. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you? Why? Uh-oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? What? What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murder in this case had the same- The murder in this case had the same idea as the murder in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right, I mean, is this safe? Safe? You already got any guilty verdict, we have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if anything, is, if anything sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Y yes, Mr. Wright? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Uh, that's a bit of a bold claim, but... We are grasping at straws, after all. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Don't laugh at me, Von Karma. So, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer than Miles Edgeworth himself. No. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant Edgeworth and the victim Robert Hammond were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter and it couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who this is sitting on the boat. Murderer and Hammond, Edgeworth and the murderer, Edgeworth and Hammond. The murderer, um... Edgeworth and the murderer, right? I think? Of course, it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met with Edgeworth. 
Oh, I see. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. This is really clever. I'm not sure what to make of all this. L Ludicrous! Mr. Wright, tell us the name of the murderer then. Murderer's name? Right, it's... We don't know the murderer's name yet, do we? Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? Ah, again, you wasted my time. Do you have somewhere to be, Von Karma? Is that why you keep shouting about that? I don't know, because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where, where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not in a boat? What? Well, then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. It took place at the boathouse itself. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way, he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. He finds it and returns the boat. Just then, as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop? Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Where he then murdered him. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Edgeworth? The boat shop caretaker. Of course it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't need to hit anyone? Ugh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Because the first shot missed to create a witness. To create a witness? I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifted his pistol and fires one shot. Then ensures that anyone who heard the shot will look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, the murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol and the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat has shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize everything once you realize that everything else falls into place, the boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. 
These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Will the court accept that, though? Bailiff? Bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly! Okay. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hmm. So we have a questioning segment for Edgeworth now. And I'm going to end this episode here. This is getting really, really good. But um, if you guys enjoyed this episode, give it a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter, as well as support my Patreon. And check out my reaction channel. All those links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. If you are subscribed or in the subscribe right now, be sure to hit that bell icon to be notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rules, signing off. Talk to you later.